unlike resistors, whose job is to generate power from a moving current, capacitors exist to store electrical energy in something where a voltage has been applied to a circuit. And the one that you'll be responsible for understanding on the MCAT is the parallel plate capacitor. What it consists of is two plates that are attached to some voltage generating source, usually a battery here. And between those plates will usually be what's called a dielectric or an insulating substance. And this dielectric is something that serves as an insulator so that not all units of charge, not all electrons can readily pass from one side to the other. And in so doing, that creates a gradient of positive on one side and negative on the other that is essentially potential electrical energy that can later be harnessed. So you often see capacitors that build up and store charge for use in a circuit. And those are very helpful circuit elements for things such as car batteries and car engines. The way that they work is that, remember that this large line is the positive side of the battery. And so electrons would be attracted there and they would be repelled from the negative end of the battery. Now also remember that before they realized that electrons were responsible for current, they just defined current as something that moves in the direction of the positive charge. Even though we know that it's actually negatively charged particles, it's the electrons that are actually generating it. But the bottom line is that negatively charged things, electrons, will move away from here and through the circuit and they'll get here. Their goal is to get all the way to the positive pole of the battery. But the capacitor doesn't allow that. What happens instead is that the negative charges accumulate because they're not able to cross over the dielectric and get to the other plate of the capacitor. And the few that do make it over, those come over and they're negatively charged, but they move so quickly through the wire that they end up back down here at the positive pole of that battery. And so what you end up with is an excess of negative charge on one plate, the plate that is closer to the negative pole of that battery or that voltage source. And you end up with the absence of a negative charge because as soon as electrons get over there, they disappear. You end up with the absence of a negative charge, which is often considered a positive charge on the other side of the capacitor. Now, the way that you calculate this is know that the capacitance equals uh, epsilon here, which is the permittivity of a dielectric, how much it enables those dipoles to exist. Because what we have here is a dipole. We have a positive charge there and a negative charge on the other side. And that is electrical potential energy. And so the permittivity is an indicator of how much charge can be stored. And the, the greater this is, the more of an insulator this is, the larger the dipole is, and therefore the greater the electrical potential energy that is being stored across the plates of those capacitors. Now, this is proportional to the area of these plates, so the surface area of these plates, and it's inversely proportional to the distance between them. So if you increase the distance, you reduce the capacitor. So the ideal capacitor is one with very, very large plates that are very, very close together. Those are the ones that can store the most energy and have the greatest capacitance, and thus can set up the most powerful dipoles that there are. If you understand that and realize that capacitance and the ability to store potential energy is really a measurement of the power of the insulator, how big the surface is, and how close the two plates are to each other, that's all you're going to need to know for capacitors when you encounter them on the MCAT. This brings us to another concept that I think is very, very important to discuss. And that is that current doesn't change when it encounters a resistor or a capacitor. A resistor gives us a straightforward way to think of this, and we can use this through the example of a water wheel. So we have a stream of flowing water up here. The water enters these little buckets or containers, which then it uses to produce power. And then the water comes out at the bottom. So they're just used to sort of take advantage of the gradient of the high potential energy here versus lower potential energy there. And that's used to generate power or to perform work. But notice that the amount of water flowing in, and this way we can think of it as a water current, the water flowing in will eventually be the same as the amount of water flowing out. 
And that's very, very important. The amount of current entering a resistor will be the same as the current leaving that resistor. But it's just being used, it's having some of its potential energy depleted with the resistor for the purpose of generating power. So remember that no matter what circuit element there is, whether it's a resistor or a capacitor, nothing except for the battery here is going to have much of an in impact on how much current flows through one side or the other. And the only way the battery is relevant is if you're using a V equals IR type equation or something like that to figure out how much current there is. But the bottom line is recognize that current flowing into a resistor will always be the same as the current flowing out of that resistor. The same with the capacitor. The current will flow in, and remember the current is defined as the movement of positive charge, so it's going to move there, even though we know it's created actually by electrons. But the current will enter here. It might stall for a second, but eventually you'll end up with the exact same amount of current coming out. And once the circuit starts flowing, the current entering will always be the same as the current exiting a capacitor. So remember that moving through a capacitor or a resistor doesn't cause any change in the amount of current that is there. What does change is the potential energy of those particles or the voltage. Remember that voltage is the difference between the potential energy on one side and the potential energy on the other side. That's what's depleted as you move across a resistor or a capacitor. The voltage is what's depleted. The potential energy difference is depleted. What isn't depleted is the current, and I think that's a very, very important thing to be aware of. Mm -hmm.